Okay, so we're ready for this week six of our course. This week, we're going to talk about an algorithm for classification called Naive Bayes. This is an interesting algorithm. It has a very good performance in certain kinds of problems. So that's what we're going to study. Of course, as you realize, this is the second classification algorithm that we'll be looking at. Last week, we had looked at classification and regression trees, the CART algorithm, which was also used to classify. This time, we're going to look at the naive base classification. I am indebted to the same book that I've been talking about earlier. There's some material that I've drawn from the book, Data Mining for Business Intelligence by Shmueli Patel and Bruce. Okay, so let's take a look at this figure here. And of course, we've got two types of spheres. We've got rainbow colored spheres and we've got two other, uh, one other kind of sphere with two of the pieces in it. Okay, now suppose I told you that I've got a bunch of these in a bag and I randomly picked one of these spheres and I ask you to guess what sphere, what colored sphere have I picked? Okay, so that's the problem that we are talking about. So you could say, well, uh, if you always guessed that I've picked a rainbow colored sphere, your performance is going to be pretty accurate. You're going to have close to a 97% accuracy rate if you always guessed that I picked uh, that I had picked the rainbow sphere, right? So an algorithm with a 2.7% error rate normally sounds like a very good idea. It looks like it's a great algorithm. It's performing well 97.5% of the time, right? But what we are seeing here is that we can reach that same level of performance simply by just predicting every ball to be rainbow colored. In other words, what we are saying is we could do really well in this kind of a scenario by simply picking the maximum or the majority class. Right. So we should not get misled by big levels of performance. Simply because the level of performance is high, we cannot say that it's something great. OK, now there are many, many decisions where this kind of a scenario occurs, where the event we are talking about is pretty rare, but we still want to be able to get a good prediction rate on those rare events. For example, the IRS might have to make a decision on whether or not a particular tax return is going to be audited. OK, now the decision may mean uh, quite a lot because there's a lot of effort that goes into auditing. So if you audit something that's actually not a fraudulent return, then you ended up wasting a lot of time. On the other hand, if you missed auditing a fraudulent return, then that could also cost a lot of money to the IRS. So these decisions can be pretty important and pretty crucial. So there are many other examples that I've given in the notes that you could look at. Now, this approach to prediction, which is simply predicting that something belongs to the majority class, is called the naive approach. It's just a naive prediction. It's not based on any intelligent information and so on. So we're going to see how can we improve upon this naive approach. Let's say there are 20 people in a room. And I have selected a person at random from the room. Now I ask you, what is the best guess about the height of this person that I've picked? Given no other information, I've not given you any other information other than the fact that there are 20 people in a room. I've not told you the gender. I've not told you the age. I've not told you the population from which these were drawn, which country, which continent, etc., etc. Nothing has been given to you. And I'm telling you, what is your best guess for the height of this person? Now, given no other information, no additional information, all you can do is to simply say, I'm going to guess the height of the average human being. Of course, I've selected a human being. So you can say, I'm going to select, uh, guess the height of the average human being, and that's the best you can do. In other words, just like in the previous example, given no additional information, there's very little you can do other than to go with the averages. In the case of proportions, discrete cases, you'll go with the majority case. Now, suppose I say there are 20 people in a room. I have selected a person at random from the room. What is your best guess for the height of this person? 
But suppose I told you I picked this person out from a group of pygmies who live in Africa. They're extremely short people. Okay, so now you have a little bit more information. So your guess, obviously, you can adjust it and make it uh, about, let's say, nine inches or even a foot shorter than the average height of a human being. So in other words, what we're saying is we're given a little more information and we are able to now make a better prediction. So now I say there are 20 fifth grade students in a class. I have selected a student at random from the class. What is your best guess for the height of this student? So once again, because we know that they are fifth grade students, we still don't know, you know which race they belong to, which part of the world they were drawn from. Are they boys or girls? Or is that a mixture? We don't know any of those things, but we still know something about the height of people who are in fifth grade, you know, at about 11 or 12 years of age, what would be the typical height of a person. So we're not going to guess five feet, six inches or six feet. So we've got some more information. So now we say there are 20 students in a class and the average height is five feet, six. I've selected a, a random. What is your best guess for the height? Well, given no additional information, all you can go with is five feet, six inches. That's the best you can do. So this sort of reminds me of uh, Ford Motor Company's uh, advertisement early on. Henry Ford is reported to have said, people can have the Model T in any color so long as it's black. In other words, people had no choice. And that's exactly where we are. With no additional information to go with, all we can do is really go with the naive approach, which is to simply guess the majority class. So in a classification problem, we'll say, what is the majority class that is occurring in the population or in our sample? And whenever somebody says, I've picked an element out at random, you can your best guess is going to be to say, well, that belongs to the majority class. You may be right, you may be wrong, but probabilistically speaking, you have the greatest chances of being correct if you made that guess in the absence of any further information. Okay, so here we have a set of people. The, the solid circles represent people who have purchased our product. We are talking about a company. The solids represent people who are buyers and the others represent people who are not buyers, right? So now given this, suppose I say, I've picked out a person, each dot represents a person. I've picked out a person at random from this population. What is the probability that that person is a buyer? If you really count up the dots, you'll see that there are 12 dots who are purchasers, buyers, and there are 24 additional dots who are not purchasers. So out of a total of 36 dots, I've got 12 people who are buyers, and therefore, you could say the probability that the random person I chose is a buyer is one third, 12 out of 36. Okay, so that is the overall probability of somebody being a buyer. And I've drawn an oval around those cases that represent buyers. Now, suppose additionally, we have divided this group into representation by country. So we've got people from North America, Canada, US and Mexico. And now we've got some more information. We've got people here, for example, who are uh, Canadian and who are buyers, US and buyers, Mexico and buyers. And of course, for each of the countries, we also have non-buyers. Still, the overall probability of somebody being a buyer is still 0.33 because we're not talking about countries in this expression. But now we can calculate some of the probabilities. Probability of buyer is 36. Probability of non-buyer, of course, is is uh, 24 by 36, it's 0.67 or two thirds. Now, what is the probability of the person that I have picked randomly being a Canadian? It's There are 10 Canadians in this population, so in this sample. So you can see that out of, that's 10 out of 36, so the probability of Canada is 0.28. Similarly, the probability of US is 0.47 because we've got 17 of the 36 cases from the US and finally, the probability of Mexico is 0.25 because that covers nine out of our 36 cases. Okay, so that's just calculation of probabilities as proportions of the group. Okay, so these formulas help us to calculate various probabilities for a random person, for a randomly chosen person. But suppose uh, here is something for you to do. I've given yet another diagram with uh, 
cases, let's say buyers or students in a college, and uh, you've got the filled circles representing students who are majors in engineering and the non-filled circles representing other students and we've got female and male students so just for practice you could calculate these numbers here what is the probability of somebody a randomly chosen person being a female a male a student of engineering or a student of non-engineering so i would say just think about it for a little bit before taking a look at the answer it's not not difficult all of these are easy questions so i would say just pause the video take a minute to answer the question and then proceed so that you're in the flow of things as I go ahead. Things will start getting a little bit more complex as we go forward. So I would suggest that you work yourself into this by uh, not rushing through things and just working through everything carefully. So total cases is 32. In this example, it's not 36. There are nine females, 23 males, 10 engineering students, and 22 non-engineering students. Therefore, we can calculate all these probabilities. So probability of each of those is the number divided by 32 which is the total so you could calculate that i haven't calculated the exact decimal value just expressing it as fractions so that's fine 